Hello everyone, it's me again, eLearning Hub is signing on to provide you with another insight. Today we will be uncovering the paragraph structure. This video will benefit the students who need to strengthen their paragraph organization and reading comprehension skills, as well as those who will be taking the civil service exam and the English proficiency test can benefit from watching this video. So stay connected and be enlightened. Many of us struggle when it comes to paragraph organization and reading comprehension tests because of the numerous texts we need to read. However, if we know the structure of the paragraph, it will be easy for us to organize and answer the questions correctly. What is paragraph organization? Paragraph organization refers to the way sentences are structured and ordered to create a unified and cohesive body of text. The principal features to consider in paragraph organization are the topic sentence and controlling idea, supporting details, organizational patterns, and signal words. Together, these features develop a topic and connect ideas from one point to the next logically and fluidly. The paragraph has three parts. First is the topic sentence, followed by supporting details, and the last part is the concluding sentence. The first part is the topic sentence. It is very important for you to know the topic sentence in order for you to organize your paragraph correctly. A topic sentence is the most important sentence in the paragraph, sometimes referred to as a focus sentence. The topic sentence helps organize the paragraph by summarizing the information in the paragraph. In formal writing, the topic sentence is usually the first sentence in the paragraph although it doesn't have to, because there are some structures of the paragraphs that the topic sentence is written in the middle or at the end of the paragraph. A topic sentence has two parts, the topic or main idea and a controlling idea or focus. The topic or main idea is what the paragraph is going to be about and a controlling idea or focus explains why the paragraph is being written. The topic sentence helps readers understand the purpose of the paragraph. Each of the subsequent sentences in the paragraph develops or expounds on that point with supporting details. Let's take a look on this paragraph. Cats are very good pets. They are naturally good caregivers because they take care of their kittens, so they want to take care of their owners as well. Cats are quite clean, and if you train them to use a litter box, they require almost no cleanup in their areas. In this paragraph, what is the topic sentence? It is clearly seen that the first sentence is the topic sentence. Cats are very good pets. Cats is the topic, and our very good pets is the controlling idea. This controlling idea, very good pets, will be the point of discussion. Why cats are very good pets? So, the writer of this paragraph gave some reasons or proofs that the cats are very good pets. It is stated, they are naturally good caregivers because they take care of their kittens so they want to take care of their owners as well. Cats are quite clean, and if you train them to use a litter box, they require almost no cleanup in their areas. These are the reasons showing the cats are very good pets and are what we call supporting details. This is the second part of the paragraph, supporting details. Supporting details elaborate upon and prove the topic sentence. In simpler way, these are the explanations you have made to understand your topic sentence. Supporting details should be drawn from a variety of sources 
and based on research, experiences, etc., plus the writer's own analysis. Using a combination of different supports in the most common and effective way to strengthen a paragraph. The last part is the concluding sentence. Every paragraph should conclude with a closing statement that connects the concepts presented in the paragraph and reinforces the main idea one last time. In case of a longer assignment, the concluding statement should also serve as a transition to the concepts in the subsequent paragraph. Concluding sentence performs several functions. It should signal to the reader that the paragraph has come to an end. It should also remind the reader about the topic sentence. It should summarize the main points mentioned in the paragraph. It restates the main idea in different way. It draws conclusion based on the information in the paragraph. And it makes a prediction, suggestions, or recommendations. Let's take a look at the given paragraph, then determine the best conclusion on the given choices. There are two reasons I hate big cities. Firstly, there is full of noise 24-7 in big cities. You can hear horns honking, traffic roaring, music blaring, and people talking at all hours of the day and night. It is never quiet in a big city. Secondly, I hate the anonymity in big cities. No one knows or cares about you. Neighbors who live next door to each other for many years don't even know each other's names. In a big city, you can feel very lonely. In this paragraph, there is no conclusion written. In the choices given, what is the best conclusion? A. In brief, I prefer to live in a small town where it is quieter and people are friendlier. B. In conclusion, big cities are noisy, lonely places to live. C. Big cities also have a lot of crime. The best conclusion is letter B. In conclusion, big cities are noisy, lonely places to live. Here are a few signal words used by some writers in writing the conclusions. To conclude, to sum up, in summary, in short, in conclusion, to summarize, in brief, indeed. In this sample paragraph, there is no concluding statement. We only have topic sentence and supporting details because not all paragraphs are written in one structure. There are five structures of the paragraph. First, inverted pyramid. The topic sentence is written at the beginning of the paragraph or the first sentence in the paragraph. Second, pyramid. The topic sentence is written at the end of the paragraph. Third, diamond. The topic sentence is written at the middle of the paragraph. Fourth, hourglass. The topic sentence is written at the beginning and end of the paragraph. Lastly, rectangle. The topic sentence is implied. It means the topic sentence is not stated in the paragraph. The reader's responsibility is to figure out the topic sentence based on the given supporting details. In this structure, we can assess well the reading comprehension of the readers. First sample paragraph. Owls are raptors or birds of prey. They are carnivores so quickly and silently swoop down on their prey from above. Most raptors such as eagles, hawks, and falcons are day hunters. They use their sharp eyesight to spot small animals on the ground below. Owls, on the other hand, use their senses to hunt in a different way. Owls are nocturnal, which means they do their hunting at night. This paragraph follows an inverted pyramid structure and adopts a deductive method, 
which begins with a general statement in the form of a topic sentence and proceeds to provide a specific reasons to support it. Specifically, the first sentence serves as a topic sentence asserting that owls are raptors or birds of prey. The subsequent sentences serve as supporting details that explain the rationale behind why owls are classified as raptors or birds of prey. Second sample paragraph. There are very large graceful birds with wingspans from 6 to 8 feet across and bodies often as long as 3 feet. They can soar over 10,000 feet high and they have such a good eyesight. They can spot a fish from a mile away. When they go after a fish in the water, they can be diving down at the speeds up to 100 miles an hour. They glide just inches over the water until they snag the fish with their feet and then fly off to eat it. They are very hardy birds and can live up to 30 years in the wild. Watching a bald eagle is an awesome sight. After reading it, have you figured out the structure of the paragraph? This paragraph follows a pyramid structure where the supporting details are presented at the beginning leading up to the topic sentence which is placed at the end. This is an example of the inductive method where specific reasoning is presented first and then builds up to a general conclusion. Specifically, the supporting details in this paragraph provide explanation for why watching a bald eagle is an awesome sight. Third sample paragraph. Let's work together in discovering the structure. Turn off the light in a room when no one is in. Never leave the light on before sleeping. When ironing clothes, turn off the electric iron when it becomes hot. There are many other ways by which electricity can be conserved. Turning off the switch of an electric run machine after using it is also a means of saving on electricity. Upon reading it, have you guessed the structure of the paragraph? The paragraph employs a diamond structure, where the topic sentence is located in the middle and the supporting details are presented both before and after it. The initial and final sentences serve as supporting details, outlining various ways to conserve electricity. The topic sentence which reads, There are many other ways by which electricity can be conserved, is positioned in the center of the paragraph to highlight its importance and tie together the supporting details that were presented earlier and later in the paragraph. Let's guess the structure of this paragraph. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle requires eating a nutritious diet and getting regular exercise. A nutritious diet includes eating a variety of foods from each of the four food groups, meat, dairy, fruits and vegetables, and grains. Regular exercise is also an essential part of keeping a healthy lifestyle. Most experts recommend exercising at least 30 minutes a day, 6 days a week. These two aspects, eating a healthy diet and exercising on a regular basis, will maintain a healthy lifestyle. After reading the paragraph, will you be able to identify the structure that it follows? In this paragraph, it employs the hourglass structure where the topic sentence is presented at the beginning and end of the paragraph. The initial sentence establishes the main idea that maintaining a healthy lifestyle requires a nutritious diet and regular exercise. While the final sentence, also known as the concluding statement, summarizes the main points and reinforces the importance of the topic sentence. The sentences in the middle of the paragraph serve as supporting details that elaborate on the topic sentence and provide further explanation. Another sample paragraph. Let's predict the structure of the paragraph employed. Blair and Natalie are not speaking to each other today. It was weird sitting at their table during lunch while they were glaring at each other. 
I hope they make up soon. We are three best friends, and I don't want to choose sides. After reading the paragraph, will you be able to identify the structure that it employs? This paragraph adopts a rectangular structure where the topic sentence is not explicitly stated within the paragraph. Instead, it is implied, and the reader must discern the main idea of the paragraph by examining the supporting details provided. This structure challenges the reader to actively engage with the text and infer the topic sentence based on the information presented. The topic sentence is, Blair and Natalie had a fight. Those are the five structures of the paragraph. Inverted pyramid, pyramid, diamond, hourglass, and rectangle. Now, let's have the orders of the paragraph. Familiarizing oneself with the different orders of a paragraph is crucial for arranging its content in a coherent manner. Understanding the different orders of the paragraph is vital to ensure that the paragraph is properly organized. There are three orders of the paragraph. First, chronological order or time order. Second, space or spatial order. Lastly, logical order. Chronological order. This is the time order of the sequence in which the events occurred. A chronological paragraph follows the natural order in which something happens. Writers use chronological order to give instructions to explain how something works or to show how something happened. Let's arrange this paragraph in chronological order. A. When I looked at my watch, it was already 11 o'clock. B. As soon as I got there, the phone started ringing. C. Yesterday, I went to work early to get some extra filing done. D. Then he asked me to make arrangements for a client to stay in town overnight. E. A moment later, my boss walked in. F. Immediately, he asked me to type up a letter for him. For you to arrange correctly without wasting of time, look immediately on time connectives. When I look at my watch as soon as I got there, yesterday, then, a moment later, immediately, etc. Let's arrange it in chronological order. Yesterday, I went to work early to get some extra filing done. As soon as I got there, the phone started ringing. A moment later, my boss walked in. Immediately, he asked me to type up a letter for him. Then, he asked me to make arrangements for a client to stay in town overnight. When I looked at my watch, it was already 11 o'clock. Let's arrange another paragraph in chronological order. Look on the time connectives to arrange effectively. Based on your assessment, what is the correct arrangement of the events? Is it number one, A, D, E, C, F, B, G? Number two, F, A, G, C, B, D, E? Number three, E, B, G, A, C, F, D? Number four, C, B, G, F, D, E, A? The answer is number three. Let's arrange it. On January 1st, I woke up early and went for a run. Later that day, I met up with some friends for lunch. The next week, I started a new job and had to adjust to a new schedule. In February, I took a trip to visit family out of town. While I was away, I received news that my application to graduate school had been accepted. In March, I began preparing for the upcoming semester and moved into a new apartment closer to campus. Overall, the past few months have been full of changes 
and new experiences. The second order of the paragraph is a spatial order. Spatial order is a method of organizing information or ideas in a piece of writing based on their physical location or relationship in space. It is a type of organization that arranges details according to their position or location, such as from near to far, far to near, left to right or right to left, inside to outside or outside to inside, top to bottom or bottom to top, or any other spatial relationship. The spatial order is commonly used in descriptive writing, where the author describes a scene, object, or event by providing details in a logical order based on their spatial relationship to each other. This helps the reader to visualize and understand the scene or object more clearly. Let's discover the order of the description of the paragraph. I was seeing the world with my eyes. Surely I was. I stood on the crest of a hill overlooking the valleys from miles around and gazed upon the broad expanse of land and sea about me. My eyes feasted on the distant mountains, which at the moment were purple and gold in the sunset haze. The lake out yonder, crystal clear in its depths, was peaceful in its twilight repose. The trees nearby brought forth mighty strain of a thousand melodies. At my feet were flowers that nodded their heads at the passing breeze. Above me, in a little while, the sky would blossom out with tiny glittering diamonds. How does the writer describe the place? For you to answer correctly, look immediately the connectives. We have distant and at my feet and then above me. So based on the signal words, we can say that the description are arranged from far to near and bottom to top. What times are inferred to? In the paragraph, my eyes feasted on the distant mountains, which at the moment were purple and gold in the sunset haze. Additionally, the sky would blossom out with tiny glittering diamonds. Based on these statements, the periods of time inferred, sunset and night. What weather condition is being described in the paragraph? Based on the statements, the trees nearby brought forth mighty strain of a thousand melodies and at my feet were flowers that nodded their heads at the passing breeze. It is clearly seen that the weather condition in this paragraph is windy. The last order of the paragraph is the logical order. Logical order is the arrangement of ideas, arguments, or information in a clear and organized way that makes sense to the reader or listener. In writing, logical order involves arranging paragraphs, sentences, or even individual words in a manner that follows a logical sequence or pattern. This could involve presenting ideas or events in chronological order cause and effect relationship, or a step-by-step -step process. Logical order helps to create a clear and concise presentation of information that is easy to understand and follow. It allows the reader or listener to see the connections between ideas and the relationship between them, making it easier to comprehend and remember the content being presented. Logical order is commonly used in academic writing, research papers, and technical writing, as well as speeches and presentations. Upon looking at it, have you figured out the structure of the paragraph? Yes, it is our glass. If the structure is our glass, you already know that the paragraph has three parts. What is the topic sentence in the paragraph? The topic sentence is the first sentence. 
eating in the student center is a pleasant experience. The sentences follow it are supporting details that explain why it is a pleasant experience to eat at the student center. The reasons given to explain the topic sentence are arranged according to their importance, and the writer uses some transitional devices like first, second, moreover, however, finally, when that happens, for these reasons, to indicate the sequence of the reasons. Then, the concluding statement is the last sentence, which restates the topic sentence. Eating in the student center is a pleasant experience. These are the key points to consider regarding paragraph organization and reading comprehension. In my upcoming blog, I will provide exercises to test your abilities and offer additional strategies to improve your skills in these areas. As we conclude, eLearning Hub would like to leave you with this quote. Success in learning comes from putting in effort, staying dedicated, and consistently practicing to achieve your goals. Once again, this is eLearning Hub, reaching you wherever you are. Just stay connected and be enlightened. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click also the notification bell for you to be notified for the upcoming videos.